Hello there everyone, another classic video on VAT and foods. So you'll recall um, one of the most famous cases uh, which went to the courts about 30 years ago was the Jaffa Cakes. Are they a cake or are they confectionery? Because it makes a heck of a difference from a VAT point of view. So VAT on confectionery, standard rated, but if it's deemed as a food, a type of food, no VAT. So there, is, there was millions of pounds of VAT at stake. They spent millions of pounds in legal fees through the courts. And over the years, we've had similar things. And it comes back to my recent uh, video on VAT. Now that we're out of Europe, for one of the, and we can shape the VAT rules in this country any way we see fit. One of the areas surely is on foodstuffs and, and getting so we don't end up with all these ridiculous court cases about what is subject to VAT and what is not. Anyway, so what was the latest one? Well, it involved Walker's Sensation. So Walker's Crisps, owned by Pepsi Cola, have a well-known uh, brand of crisp uh, called Poppadoms. Sensations Poppadoms. And they look like mini Poppadoms, like you get in an Indian restaurant. And this went before the VAT Tribunal because basically Walker's Crisps said these things are basically Mini poppadoms. They're not really crisps, they're poppadoms. Why would they say that? Because it would save them millions and millions of pounds of VAT. Because having them deemed as poppadoms, there's no VAT. But if they were crisps, there is VAT added. So, what did the tribunal say? And, and some of the comments were absolutely priceless, I'll tell you. So, basically the first tier tribunal, uh, which was presided over actually by a well-known uh, tax personality in the tax world. I was quite familiar when I, with the person's name and I read the judgment and they basically said, look, <laughs> they knocked out all of Walker's Crisp's arguments. One of their arguments being, and this is brilliant, they said, well, it says on the packet that they're poppadoms. So they must be taxed from a VAT point of view as if they're poppadoms. And the judge said, excuse me, you what? So does that mean then that hula hoops you're supposed to, you know, put them around your waist and do a bit of a jiggle? Or does it mean that monster munch are only supposed to be eaten by monsters? <laughs> and the judge actually came out with those two examples, which I thought was brilliant. So that put the brakes on uh, on Walker's arguments, that just because it says it's a pop it it's going to be a pop it When you get into the nitty-gritty, the actual what makes up um, the contents, which is the most important thing, which derives the vats, uh, this is what it said. Basically, it said that for genuine poppadoms that you find in a restaurant, most of the, it's made from gram flour, most of the contents. And that's why it's predominantly, uh, well, it is uh, exempt from VAT. But on these poppadom type crisps from Walker's, there was a high concentration of potato granules, potato starch, and modified potato starch, which basically they said, look, that's what you get in all these types of crisps and any type of crisps, uh, you pretty much get the same sort of thing. So the tribunal said, look, it's not a food stuff, it is crisps, therefore VAT needs to be uh, added. Or basically, if it's not added, it erodes into the margin of Walker's crisp, but to cut a long story short, it's gonna cost Walker's millions of pounds uh, in VAT to pay over to the tax man now that their Walker's sensations, poppadoms have been deemed to be a crisp and not a food stuff. But I just thought I'd share that with you, particularly the brilliant line from the judge about the hula hoops and the monster munch. So uh, just another video there on the, the nuances, the crazy world of VAT and food. Uh, if you like this video, please do subscribe. And as always, I'll see you soon.